Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at uh, a chip which we've actually seen in a, a previous video I think it was part one of the digital to analog conversion where I made use of a, a 74LS191 and that video wasn't about that chip particularly but I thought it might be worth just covering it. We, now we have talked about um, uh, counters which is what the 191 is we've talked about them uh, over a year ago now I think it was video 105 and there's three parts to that so I'd encourage you to to have a look at those videos about counters as well um, if that's something that you're interested in but the um, 74 dual x191 whether it's the ls or the hc or whatever is uh, a binary counter produces four bit binary output and we've also made use of um, some binary coded decimal counters in the past the difference being that of course four bit binary will represent up to 16 numbers 0 to 15 whereas in bcd we use it to represent uh, the decimal numbers not to 0 to 9 um, so there is a subtle difference there so a bcd number is um, would not decode the same as a as a binary number and i wanted um, eight bits of uh, fastly changing uh, binary information to to use for a a chip that I'm going to show in a in a video that I'm still working on. So let's start by having a look at what this chip actually is, and then we'll get to the bench and see it in action. Okay, the 74191 uh, binary counter. Then I've put double X there. I'm going to be using the LS version, which is the uh, TTL um, shotty version. Uh, you might be using the HC or whatever. It's um, uh, the function is essentially the same. I just happen to have some LSs in my parts bin. Quite quite modern ones for my parts bin, 1990 year of manufacture. So it's a 16 pin um, dill package and a reasonable amount going on inside there. Here's the internal circuit diagram. So we've got uh, an array of gates. There's uh, AND, NAND, INVERT and also some OR gates there giving us uh, the logic which decodes the incoming pulses and feed four latches which are the um, uh, what what keeps a uh, tally of the count if you like uh, and then there's the um, ability to provide inputs as well from p0 to p3 so translating that to the actual chip itself uh, clock pulses uh, going on pin 14 the counts come out on 2 3 6 and 7 although be aware that that doesn't go in that order in terms of the binary number and it goes uh, uh, in a slightly different way so just uh, keep your eye on that if you're going to uh, recreate this uh, circuit. Uh, the chip counts from uh, 0 to 15 and when it gets to 15 it rolls back over to 0. At that point there are um, signals put out on pins 12 and 13. I'm going to be making use of the, the signal on pin 12 and should you so desire it's also possible um, by taking the PL pin low to actually put in uh, a preset uh, number into the latch. So you can feed in um, four binary digits there and that means the counter will then uh, start from a number which is not zero if that's uh, um, the application uh, you need to, to make use of it for. Okay, so let's um, see how we're going to hook that up. Um, so fairly straightforward for a um, logic series chip we've got power on uh, pin 16 and pin 8 is the the ground uh, I'm going to tie both pins 4 and 5 low that's the count enable and the up down we will actually um, toggle the up down pin at one point when we're on the breadboard but for all intents and purposes I'm going to um, get the chip counting up so we'll keep that low uh, I'm going to feed in uh, clock pulses on from the signal generator on pin 14 and then we're going to attach uh, LEDs with appropriate current limiting uh, to ground uh, on pins 2, 3, 6 and 7 so we can observe the outputs. So on the breadboard that's a relatively straightforward arrangement. You can hopefully see that there, the output pins coming along the bottom to the four LEDs. The only additional bit of circuitry on there is the uh, 
uh, yellow, yellow LED at the top where, uh, which is attached to the incoming signal on pin 14 which just with its current limiting resistor which just enables us to monitor the, the incoming clock pulses just to hopefully make the operation of the chip even clearer. So there we go, let's, um, let's now go to the bench and have a look at that on the breadboard. OK, here's the uh, 191 then, um, all set up as per the circuit that I've just showed you. Uh, the addition of all these jumper wires now is to allow me to show you the features of the chip. Uh, I left them out of previous photograph because it's just easy to see what's going on. So, um, we've got a clock pulse coming in from the signal generator along this uh, orange wire here and that yellow LED will be flashing in synchro with the clock pulses and then I've got the four outputs attached to four LEDs here uh, and they've got a current limiting resistor there yes I know I've only used one current limiting resistor for four LEDs I felt like being reckless so if you're keen to point that out no need to um, I wanted to live dangerously um, and so let's now uh, switch on the incoming pulses. I've got them at a fairly slow rate of uh, of two hertz. So let's do that. So you can see the clock pulses there, and you can hopefully see at this kind of speed that the counter is counting up. And when it gets to binary 16, all four LEDs on, it hops back to zero and starts all over again. So that's the general action of the counter counting from 0 to, to 15. Okay a couple of other um, inputs to take note of. I've got this pin here which is the count enable pin. I've got that tied low. Uh, if, I was to tie, if I was to take that high it would simply stop the counting action so that's a bit like a chip enable pin but for what we're doing we want it to run so that's tied low. And then this jumper here currently tied low that's the up down um, jumper uh, or pin sorry so if I now uh, stop the clock a moment I happen to have stopped it on 15 that was incredibly lucky let's now take the up down pin high and start the clock again now and you can hopefully see it's counting down and when it gets to zero it goes back to 15 so when all four LEDs go out the next step is for all four LEDs to come on and then it will continue to count down and if you swap that over while it's running it'll just swap over to to counting up. So that's the uh, up down count. Uh, now the other thing this um, chip will do uh, it allows you to preload a count um, so it doesn't have to start from zero in other words so we'll, we'll stop the clock just going to take the power off a moment and then put the power back on so it's now in the startup state uh, the counter is reading zero so the four white jumpers here are taking the four latch inputs uh, either high or low I've got it set to zero one zero one and this line here uh, when you take that low it's an active low input uh, that will load the contents of those four jumpers into the latch so if I take that low and then back to high you can see it's now put 010101 into the latch if I now start the clock the count will now start from there rather than zero so here we go we're starting the clock now and you can see it's counted up from 0101 up to uh, all ones and then uh, hop back down again so that's a facility that allows you to um, enable uh, to, to start with something other than zero. So I stop the clock for a moment, just power it down again. Now I've got another wire here which wasn't uh, in the circuit diagram, but uh, we've got two outputs um, from the chip, which I'm just going to look at one of them. One of them is active high, one of them is active low. This is the active high, so that LED, red LED is now attached to that um, pin. So let's start the clock again. And you can see normal counting is going on. Watch the red LED. So 
So hopefully what you're seeing there is we get the, the LED comes on briefly as the counter transitions from 15 back to zero. So if you like it's a carry bit, if that makes sense. And that also works the other way. So if I reverse the direction of the chip like that, um, whoops wrong jumper apologies that was the uh, load the latch chip. If I reverse the direction of the counter she'll count down and as she crosses zero back to 15 uh, that'll go high again like that. So I'll put it back to conventional counting up and so when it gets to 15 one 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 that lights momentarily and if you look at the data sheet the length of that pulse is approximately equivalent to one clock pulse. So that's clearly an output that we could feed into a second LS191 or HC191, whatever you fancy getting, um, and we could then uh, increase from a 4-bit counter to an 8-bit counter or a 12-bit or a 16. So let's um, see if we can achieve that. I'm going to reconfigure the circuit board to do that and then I'll come back via the magic of filmmaking. Here we are back and now we've got a second 191 here. Um, so I've taken the output from the uh, carry pin if you like uh, and I, that comes out on that red lid there. I've just extended it slightly so you can see the circuit a little bit better. So we've got a 191 set up exactly the same as this one. I haven't bothered with a LED for the clock input. Um, got another four LEDs and again I'm just using one resistor. I'm going to try and live dangerously uh, twice and really push my luck. Um, and I've got the uh, count enable and the up down um, pins uh, pulled low here with that jumper and this wonder there you can't see. Um, I don't intend to show you those facilities again I don't need to. So uh, it's powered up so let's just um, give it 4 Hertz from the signal generator as you can see there and when it gets to 16 this 191 now says 1 and now it's saying 2 and in a minute it'll say 3 there you go and then 4 and so it's counting up now if I speed that up to say the clock say up to 20 Hertz so you can it's not quite so painful you can see it counting a lot uh, more sensible speed now I think even 20 Hertz is perhaps not enough let's go up to 30 Hertz so that's 30 Hertz now so you can barely see the just about to see the clock is pulsing but you can see there's a um, sensible counting speed here and for completeness sake uh, this is the carry so if I pop a, a red LED onto the carry line when this gets to 15 you should see a pulse from that one so fingers crossed there we go so that's your pulse and you could daisy chain that into another 191 which would give you a 12-bit counter etc etc so hopefully you see that's um, how the daisy chain works and works very well indeed um, if I go up to 50 Hertz which you can really can't see that flashing now um, that's a much uh, more sensible sensible speed and if I go up to 100 Hertz that's now counting nice and quick and most of these LEDs are a blur but you can see the counting going on and the carry pulse um, every few seconds. So that's two 191s in a daisy chain. Just for completeness sake if you want to recreate this yourself here's a, a picture you can pause with the details of the breadboard. Um, the left hand uh, 191 and its LEDs is unchanged from the from the first uh, picture that we looked at uh, just now. Uh, and the right hand one uh, is identical circuit in terms of its out outputs but we've just got the output from the left hand chip feeding through into the clock of, uh, of the right hand chip. So hopefully that uh, makes some sense and for completeness sake there I've included the red LED at the top right with the uh, uh, just to show the um, carry function uh, operates from the second chip so do you wish to cascade it further. Okay, well that's it. They have the circuit of uh, of the two 74LS191s working together. So I hope that's um, been useful. A good bit of revision on on the way 
counters work and of course inside those chips is the ubiquitous latch um, which seems to crop up in digital electronics a great deal and um, thank goodness because it's a very useful little building block so i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please click the thumbs up if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing uh, liking the video and subscribing costs nothing uh, but you're helping other people on youtube to find the video because it'll make it uh, more visible um, and the depths of the youtube algorithm and uh, that will help uh, the channel to grow thanks very much for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video